Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assemblies Podcast. I am your host, Chris Torrance, and today I'm excited to be showing you a product that was demoed at Kansas Fest 2017, and this is the Game Board Interface Board created by Andrew and Ivan Hogan. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the board and show you how you can control 120 volt appliances using your Apple IIe. So the father-son team of Andrew and Ivan Hogan demoed the GamePort interface board at Kansas Fest 2017 and you could buy the kit as either a fully assembled uh, board or as a kit. So I went ahead and chose the kit form just because it's more fun. Um, I also got, courtesy of Andrew and Ivan, one of their control boards um, which just consists of a series of four 120 volt uh, AC outputs right here and this has a connector that you can then plug into the game port interface um, so this makes it easier so you don't have to build one of these yourselves and if we take a look at the kit itself the instructions are really well done um, so the kit consists of the board itself as well as a whole series of components so we're going to go ahead and we actually you can see I've already started assembling it and we'll go ahead and we'll uh, assemble the rest of it now and then try it out. So here's the assembled game port interface board with everything soldered in. Uh, it turned out really nicely and the instructions are extremely clear. There's a couple uh, minor points to note. There were some errors on the PCB, and so included in the kit are three jumper wires, which you can see here, here, and here. Um, and it actually wasn't too bad to solder those on, so just be careful if you're assembling the kit to make sure to do those wires. So we've got the game port interface board all assembled in its plastic case, and it actually looks really nice. So the Hogan's did a great job uh, coming up with a case for it. And we've got the ribbon cable plugged into the Apple IIe uh, into the 16-pin game port over here. So you can see that in there. And you can actually also use a joystick at the same time. Uh, you may get some conflicts, so you probably want to just use one or the other, uh, not actually combine them. But you can leave your joystick plugged in and play games. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll plug in the board. So it comes with a five volt power supply and we'll plug it in and make sure I did my soldering correct. Apple to board. And it has an F, which I assume is some sort of revision. Um, so let's just do a quick tour of the board. So obviously we've got the ribbon cable coming in from the game port on the Apple. Uh, there's another port here, which we'll use in a minute. And this goes out to the 120 volt um, supply and then we've got the 16 segment uh, LED up here and that can display possible combinations for four different states and we can control this with software uh, we've got a seven segment LED which we can also control and then we've got the inputs and outputs so right here these four are the optical relays uh, for the output from the game port and so this is where you're triggering say high or low for um, one of the outputs say to 120 volt appliance and so these isolate the Apple II from the current from one of those uh, 120 volt uh, supplies and then we've got LEDs to show the status of those then we've got four push buttons here and these are inputs to the Apple IIe uh, so pushing one of these will trigger uh, the input on one of the paddle inputs on the Apple and we'll see that when we fire up the software which we will do next. So I've downloaded the software from Andrew and Ivan Hogan's website so let's go ahead and we'll fire it up and see what happens. And this software is basically a demo program that lets you control the interface board and then also uh, give you some ideas about what you can do with it. So we're just gonna fire up GPIB1 and this is just a machine language program uh, with a nice menu interface 
and okay you can see it starts up we've got a zero which indicates we're ready to go and it's telling us the various states of all of the buttons and the enunciators so you can see uh, paddle zero and one uh, because there's no actual joystick plugged in those are pegged at 255 um, Button zero through two are off. All four enunciators are off. Now, one thing to note is if you're using this with an Apple IIe or II Plus, uh, you can't actually access paddle or button number three. Uh, you can only access that on a 2GS. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. But let's go ahead and we'll push one of the buttons and see what happens. So if I press uh, button zero, you can see the program makes a little noise. It tells me that button zero has just been turned on. And now let's try button one. So that works. Button two works. And you can see button three, which is actually the fourth button here. Uh, the LED lights up on the board, but nothing happens because the Apple IIe uh, can't actually access it. All right, and we can also turn on the enunciators, so using just keys on the uh, keyboard. And so this controls the output from the uh, game port interface board. And But let's actually plug in some appliances and see how that works. Uh, but before I do that, it might be fun to take a look at what the uh, thermistor or the temperature sensor is reading. So if I hit the T key, uh, we can go to that, and you can see it's... 70 degrees Fahrenheit right now or 20 Celsius and you can actually it's kind of nice this program you can use the uh, arrow or a plus and minus keys to uh, tweak the calibration for it um, if I hit O for field input output this is kind of a really low level view of what's going on in the game port interface board uh, as you can see it has the state of all the enunciators uh, the inputs and outputs uh, the four coils, and when we push these, you can see what's actually happening. Coil one, coil two, coil three, and of course, coil four doesn't do anything. If we hit the game port, then this is a kind of a bird's eye view of the 16 pits in the game port. And so again, uh, hitting one of these tells me, uh, now I've got five volts on uh, push button zero, five volts on push button one, five volts on push button two. So this is actually really nice because then you can get a, it's good for debugging if you don't know what's going on, but also just to kind of understand how does the game port work and how does the input uh, port work on the game port interface. And then finally we can hit M to get kind of a help for all of the different controls. Let's go back now and we'll try the 120 volt output. So to do that, I'm gonna use the supplied cable. And so this uh, cable just plugs into one end, goes into the uh, game port interface board. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off just to make sure that I don't damage anything. So now let's try the enunciator outputs from the game port interface board. And there's one tiny trick to this, which I didn't realize when I first tried it, but you remember when I said earlier that the Apple II GS was the only one that could use paddle number three, the button on paddle three? Uh, well, it turns out that you actually have to flip the switch. If you're not on a 2GS, you have to flip the switch uh, from the A position down to the B position. Otherwise, your outputs uh, from the enunciators won't actually work properly because this 120 volt control board needs uh, some power. So when you flip the switch down to the B position, it actually supplies five volts on the output line here on the gray cable that normally would have been used for push button uh, three, the fourth push button. Instead, it supplies five volts of power uh, to the control box. So now that we've got that all wired up correctly, I'm gonna go over to my keyboard and I'm gonna try and turn on, uh, let's see, this radio is, should be on enunciator zero. So I'm gonna hit F and it comes on and the radio comes on okay and then enunciator one should be the lamp and so that works and let's see if we can get them both going here all right so we got both of those going and obviously we could go ahead and we could plug something into these two as well so we've taken a look at uh, andrew and ivan hogan's uh, game port interface board um, it was easy to assemble the kit looks really nice and the instructions are clear. Um, there could have been a little bit better instructions on the website as far as actually hooking it up. 
Uh, so the assembly instructions were great, but it could just use a little bit more uh, work on the actual usage instructions, especially that tricky uh, 2GS switch, which tripped me up for a little bit. But overall, I'm really impressed with the product. Um, I barely scratched the surface of what you can do with it. So I just showed how to control 120 volt appliances with it. Um, but there's a lot more you could do, especially with the temperature input that's built into it. As well, there's also a light sensor uh, that's on there that you could make use of. For example, uh, if the light uh, went below a certain threshold, you could turn on a, a lamp in the room. Uh, or you could imagine using the temperature sensor to control a heater. Um, you could even plug a coffee maker into it and uh, have your Apple II wake you up with fresh coffee in the morning. So there's a lot more you could do with this. Um, and I would highly recommend if you're interested at all in home automation or just playing around with cool gadgets with your Apple II to contact uh, Andrew and Ivan Hogan and see about getting one of these kits and I'll put the uh, contact info in the show notes. Uh, if you have any comments about this, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.